While that is on, we need to appreciate that the families that grieve, the nations that grieve from the results of these accidents. And so we're kind of reminding ourselves that these pains last. And the best we can do is to ensure the avoidance of accidents by training by regulation, by every other measure. Today has been chosen as a day that we should all not only remember, but think along lines that will improve the safety level. And with AIB uh, in Nigeria today, and the facilities they have, not only to investigate, but using training, not only our locals, but international uh, uh, personnel, we're looking forward to uh, situations where we can read, understand, analyze, and produce results that will, again, encourage avoidance and improve safety. So with that, I want to thank you very much on behalf of the airlines. I'm Captain Chimara Imediogu, like I said, and the guests here will put in more details, correct? Thank you. for this, but um, I think um, when, it's, uh, when you lose someone very close uh, in a crash, for instance, an air crash, it can be very uh, depressing. So um, hearing about this particular uh, function and uh, um, in a, uh, initiative is indeed welcoming. And I believe um, uh, everyone that has lost someone in a crash at some point in time would be uh, touched and um, happy to, to know that not only are the airlines concerned, uh, the operators and regulatory authorities, are, they also have a heart and they also think about uh, how they are living henceforth. Uh, and so thank you very much for the invitation and acknowledgement. Thank you. This is quite commendable. And uh, we were happy that under the leadership of the Honorable Minister of Aviation, leadership of uh, Captain Shew, I'm uh, sorry, the NCAA, who is also here, and uh, the indefatigable engineer this has come to fruition. It has always been our concern that safety and security is taken as a high premium in the aviation industry. And when victims of crashes are neglected, the society is hurting, is not happy. It gives a wrong perception of air transport, which is supposed to be the fastest and safest means of transportation ever evolved by man. So it's something really commendable that the present leadership in the aviation industry together with the airlines are concerned about victims and luckily again in the yet to be promulgated uh, bill, provision is made for victims family support assistance. So we are happy with the initiative being taken, and we pray that when that comes, uh, the society will be happier. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon all. Please, can we stand uh, honoring uh, the victims and try and uh, find some kind of consolation for the uh, family members and friends. You can never replace somebody who has gone. But well, at least the best we can do, working collectively together, 
is to ensure that accidents do not happen again in Nigeria. We don't lose one single person to an air crash going forward uh, in Nigeria. Over the last five years or so, uh, due to enhanced uh, safety oversight activities and also in collaboration with the recommendation of actions by the Air Accident Investigation Bureau, given us the uh, reports of the investigation aircraft will work together. We implement these uh, recommendations, which will also help NCA enhance its oversight activities. Uh, improvement, we've had significant improvement uh, in the safety as regard to air crashes in Nigeria. And I hope this collaboration and working together will only, will only get better. I mean, we never ever have an air crash uh, again in Nigeria and hopefully a globally significant reduction uh, in uh, accidents and aircraft crashes. They are terrible. They are terrible things to happen. And you can never know that till you go to the side of an air crash. I hope we never, none of us ever, ever will have any reason uh, to go to the side of uh, an air crash. I'd really like to thank the Commissioner uh, Engineer Aikina Latero, who is a good friend, a colleague, a partner uh, for this occasion, which is very apt. Uh, IQ Council, when I was in the IQ Council, we discussed this extensively, and uh, I'm glad to see this uh, coming to reality uh, in Nigeria. The, uh, when I came, as uh, made the DG, one of the first things uh, the commissioner did was this extended sign of collaboration and working together with NCA, which we admit we revitalize the committee. It's all for the purpose of enhanced aviation safety. Uh, they have done a pretty good job of investigating aircraft accidents. They sent to NCA at joint teams, we sit down, we review, and uh, NCA has the responsibility for implementing this uh, their recommendation and actions to make the system better. And some of you uh, will be surprised, some of the actions or recommendations are directly to NCA as an organization. We might have gaps and lapses in the system that nobody will know till something happens. And I really like to thank uh, AIB for that collaboration. Uh, for give, give them a round, hand, round of applause for that. <laughs> Safety is one of the, it's the primary function of the Civil Aviation Authority. Yes, NCA is responsible for safety, but we cannot do it all alone. We cannot see everything at the same time. Safety, like security, is the responsibility of all parties. All the stakeholders in the industry, the airlines, the ground handlers, the crew, the passengers, everybody. And uh, AIB is a significant component uh, of that system. So we'll, I promise you all we'll continue working with AIB to ensure that uh, whatever deficiencies are found in the system are taken care of, not only in a reactive manner, but in a proactive manner. We also are developing uh, some systems within NCA to significantly enhance our safety oversight of the industry. As we all know, the industry is going on us to step up to, to continue that uh, complete uh, oversight. Uh, before I go, just one comment. Uh, I don't like that what the NCA is a policeman of the industry. It, it, creates, it creates this divide. It's you versus uh, us versus you. It's not wrong. We are all in the same boat. We are partners in progress. And it's responsibility our main responsibility is to join hand with everybody and work together in a collaborative manner to ensure the safety, security, efficiency of the system. Without the industry, there will not be any NCA. So it is our responsibility to work together with the industry. Uh, we find people who had issues, they came to us, we sat down, we worked together, we resolved it. Nobody had us. We only resolve to sanction when there is imminent danger 
or when the other parties are not cooperative. Sanctions are others uh, last minute, last minute, last ditch effort uh, to get to the system work. So we are partners in progress. NCA is your friend. If you have any issue, please come to us, call me directly, tell me, we'll sit down, we'll work together, we'll resolve it to ensure the continued safety of the system. Thank you very much. Today is not a day of actually making some beautiful speeches or others. It's actually a very, very solemn affair that requires some sober reflections. Um, ICAO mandated us and every member state of this day, 20th of February, of every year to commemorate air crash victims and families. Um, here in Nigeria, we have had a fair share of such. And by God's grace, we don't wish to have more of such. It's always our prayers. As I said, actually, it's a day of sober reflections. As all of us gathered here, on one way or the other, there is none who is not affected by this. Either it's a survivor, a family member of, of a victim, one way or the other. In view of that, I was also asked to represent the Honorable Minister of Aviation, being a mandate given by the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO. This day is International Day for Commemorating Air Crash Victims and Their Families. And I know all of us are part of it. Um, it's thing that has happened and nobody uh, will ever wish that will happen. And had anybody know that such thing will happen to him or her, despite the fact that we know air transportation is the most convenient and the safest means of transport, especially for a reasonable distance to be made. It is yet, if somebody knows that actually a fate like this awaits him, definitely he can postpone that travel for a better day that such will not take place. But all, these are all beyond our own powers. When it is bound to happen, it shall happen. And this is the fact that because nobody knows that it will happen. But yet, we as uh, mankind, and as such as regulators of a sort at certain level, we try to see that such things do not happen. And I know for sure some of us at the regulatory side made it a kind of sacrifice to see that they get onto that regu regulatory side and put on their best to avert something if it will happen. But for those that has happened, after investigations and all sort of things are done, then the preventive measures for future occurrence are trying to put in place. That's why we have the Aircraft Accident Investigation Bureau, and then the NCAA, who after the investigation is being carried out and then is sent to them to see to it, and then take the appropriate action to it. The 
my brother, the DG of NCS, actually said it all. Mine is just to recap it. But we stand to hear more from the convener who the ICAO mandated to convene this day under their auspices to let us know. But on behalf of the Honorable Minister of Aviation, Senator Hadi Sirika, I commiserate with all family members of the victims of such crashes too numerous to mention. And may the soul of the departed in such accident rest in peace. And also the family members of the victims, may God give them the fortitude to bear these monumental losses. I so pray. And as I said, it is a solemn affair today. It's not actually activities of uh, an activity of happiness or such. It's just to remember and commemorate the departed souls in such circumstances. Thank you very much. I uh, commiserate with you all. Thank you. Day for the commemoration of air crash victims and their families. I offer my deepest sympathy to all the survivors and families of victims in the past incidents. I'm truly sorry for your losses, and I know that no one can ever adequately compensate you. May the souls of your departed loved ones continue to rest in peace. We understand that the aftermath of an air accident can be devastating, especially to the survivors, the crash victims, and their families all of whom require support and empathy. I assure you that the industry regulators and relevant authorities are committed to offering significant support, but even more so to preventing the reoccurrence of this incident. I would like to take a moment to add, appreciate the International Civil Aviation Organization, ICAO, for recognizing the need of air crash victims and their families and designating February 20 today as the day to commemorate with, their, with them annually. I would like to take, I would like to appreciate the air crash victims, families, Federation International for all they do to ensure that issues concerning air crash accident and their victims are prioritized internationally and for the working with ICAO to ensure a day is set aside to remember those whom we have lost to air crashes. Um, it is an association which is voluntary and I employ all the families of loved ones, of people that are victims of accidents to join this international organization. There's a lot to benefit uh, through them. Safety first. In civil aviation, safety always comes first. Aviation safety is important. 
because there are lives involved in every operation of an aircraft. A significant decrease in accident rate has been recorded through se several activities, including investigations and their safety recommendations. Voluntary safety reporting systems, safety culture and safety management systems, poor safety management in aviation not only damage the aircraft involved, but can also cause the avoidable loss of human lives on board the unfortunate aircraft and sometimes on ground. In Nigeria from the year 1969 to date, a total of 2,038 lives have been lost to air crashes with 42 of those affected being on ground. When you look at this data, yes, nobody wants to lose anybody, but you will still agree with me that aviation is still the safest means of transportation. In Nigeria today, in line with road safety data, we lose an average of 400 Nigerians every month to road accidents. It's usually between 300 and 600 Nigerians die of accident, road accidents annually. So if since 1969 till date, we've recorded 2,038, I think we're not doing too badly. But unfortunately, uh, some people lost their lives and we are, as a responsible agency of government in line with the civil aviation uh, uh, regulators, doing our utmost best to reduce this to zero. When you look at the economic impact of aviation, the reality is that, though quite devastating when involved in an accident, air transportation is still the safest and quickest means of transportation today. The economic benefits are apparent in various fields, including business, tourism, medicine, and even the military. Air travel contributes to sustainable development and has brought countries closer together, opening opportunities which were once limited to imagination. Aviation provides the only rapid worldwide transportation network and is a major contributor to global economic prosperity, which makes it an indispensable means of transportation. Around the world today, you will agree with me, nobody wants to go by boat from London to Lagos. They will rather fly. Even within Nigeria today, most people will rather fly. Aviation provides a perfect solution to connectivity issues between global markets. It is no wonder, therefore, that ICAO is committed to the creation and development of initiative to ensure the growth and sustenance of this industry. These also include initiatives to ensure that victim family assistance matters are adequately addressed. In 1998, during the 32nd session of ICAO Assembly, considered and acknowledged the subject of aircraft accident victims and their families. The aim was to ensure that the mental, physical, and spiritual well-being of victims involved in civil aviation accidents and their families are considered and accommodated by ICAO and its members state in accordance with ICAO policies and guidelines. Families of victims experience great anguish after an air crash, especially in the absence of effective information channels from the government or the affected airline operator to them. 
in 2001, ICAO issued the guidance on assistance to aircraft accident victims and their families. Subsequently, in 2013, the ICAO policy on assistance to aircraft accident victims and their families was published and accompanied by a manual. Family assistance entails the provision of services and information that will address the concern and needs of the aircraft accident victims and their families. The ICAO policy and guidelines ensure that the need of the victims and their families are addressed in a timely manner. Just as with any other emergency plan, it is essential to have a readiness plan to support the involved families and their and the victims. Victims, survivors, and their families should be treated with respect, dignity, and empathy. It is vital that the government and airline operator render assistance and support to the victims of their families. And not just at the time of the incident or accident, but afterwards too. Federal Government of Nigeria, through the Ministry of Aviation and the Bureau of the is following the international standards and procedures to ensure that everything is put in place to provide the requisite support for families of air incidents and their families and the survivors. Under the 2013 National Civil Aviation Policy, the Bureau is charged with the responsibility of rendering family assistance to victims and their families at times of um, aircraft accident. This is a wraparound service to be provided at the time of an incident and during investigation. It is, however, important to note that aircraft accident investigation is separate from the provision of family assistance. And until recently, the enabling legislation did not exist to enable the Bureau to carry out this mandate. Nonetheless, the Bureau has provided family assistance in the recovery of personnel effect of victims, identification of bodies, provision of information on accident investigation, and pathological services among others. AIB has also participated in the commemoration of air crash accident anniversaries. I believe that irrespective of the scale of an accident, the victims and their families should receive appropriate and timely assistance. Assistance program in support of aircraft accident victims and their families require cooperation plan, um, cooperative planning and response by the air operator, state of occurrence, non-governmental organizations, and specialized commercial companies. I therefore would like to use this opportunity to recommend that the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority put in place effective policies and regulation that will mandate airline operators in the country to have family assistance plans as part of their emergency plan or procedure. NCA should ensure that such assistance programs are supervised, exercised, and audited appropriately. The ICAO policy and manual on the assistance to accident, aircraft accident victims and their families is contained 
in document 9998 and document 9973 respectively. This detailed information, ICAP Family Assistance Policies and Guidelines are available online. The future of AIV Nigeria. I have earlier mentioned that the enabling legislation did not exist for the Bureau to complete, completely fulfill her mandate in relation to family assistance. This was the case until recently when the new act establishing the Nigerian Safety Investigation Bureau was passed. It is widely accepted that multimodality is the future of transport accident investigation. And in the transition, and the transition has always emanated from the extant Air Accident Investigation Agency. In Nigeria, the Accident Investigation Bureau has been successful in a mandate and formed a solid foundation for this transition. One major significance of this bill is the legal framework it provides for AIV to execute a more robust and effective family assistance program. The family assistance unit at the NSIB will provide victims and their families, one, emergency response to accident, two, information about the occurrence, three, coordination of travel, two, and lodging at a family assistance center, as well as assistance to those not traveling. Coordination of a visit to the accident site where access is possible, information about the location and status of the victims and the recovery, identification and disposition of remains. Information regarding the recovery, management and return of personal effects, social, emotional and psychological support, and information about the progress of the subsequent investigation and its objective. The bill which will align Nigeria with the relevant international standards and recommended practices now only awaits presidential access. Following which the AIV Nigeria will evolve into a multimodal accident investigation agency with the legal remit to extend our current responsibilities and expertise to rail and maritime in addition to air. Aviation is a very important part of the global economy and our lives. As I conclude my address to you, I want to state unequivocally that I consider the avoidance, avoid, the avoidable loss of life unacceptable. This is the reason that we at AIB Nigeria are determined to continue to extend the frontier of safety in the aviation sector as well as the other form of transportation. We will achieve this by aligning ourselves with the global best practice in the industry and by employing the latest technology and the most qualified personnel to thoroughly investigate past occurrences and make the appropriate recommendation to ensure they never happen again. We will ensure that we continue to review and improve our systems, processes, and procedures to reduce casualty associated with any transportation incident and provide information and other support systems necessary to fulfill our mandate. With the advancement of technology, it is our aim to achieve even higher safety standards and ensure even fewer fatal incidents in future. I really want to thank the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority. Without them, our work will be meaningless because they are the regulator, they are the enforcer 
it's not just about issue safety recommendations. You want to be sure that they are fully implemented. And what we've done in the last few years, we've gone a little bit higher than the ICAO Annex 13 because it stops at once it's been implemented. What we've done is to ensure it is effective. Yes, you can implement a safety recommendation, but it may not be effective. So we've gone a little bit higher. We have a team. We work together with the Nigerian Civil Aviation Authority to ensure not only that they've been implemented, but they are effective. And this will tell you has earned Nigeria to be one of the safest places to be in the world in terms of air transport today. I thank you all, and I thank you for coming. God bless you. God bless Nigeria. It's a highly regulated industry. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. There are ICAO guidance materials on how we're going to go about it. There are manuals that we uh, work with. But AIB is not going to be providing money and all that. That will come. That's why, if you listen to my address, the airline will have a family assistance program. I'll give you an example. Um, Delta serious incident in Lagos. Twelve passengers were injured. We coordinated the arrangement. Delta paid for their hospital treatment, but we coordinated. Some passengers agreed to go to the U.S. to continue their treatment. So we just are there to be sure that they're not left alone. But the one AIB would take on is the coordination, i.e. you um, uh, family victims wants to access the site, they need to uh, get to the site, they need to be some psychological issues. Of course, we'll coordinate and deal with that. And that's all what, but for you to achieve all this, you need a legal framework first. Once that is passed, then we we'll design a regulation with all related ICAO documents and manuals on family assistance program. And when we're done, we are going to invite the industry, all of you, to critique this regulation and make sure it's, you are all happy with it before we put it uh, for signature. So that's, that's the way it's going to go. Thank you, sir. The ADC 0582, uh, Sokotovia Abuja from Lagos. Okay, and um, uh, the matter is that we had just spoken at length the night before, uh, it's like two hours, and I never knew she was going on the flight. And so uh, when it happened, my father called me immediately. I was at work, and he asked me questions that I couldn't answer. So the first concern I have, was, I would say, is a board, has been a burden for us, is uh, the, the timeliness of information to us. The, the timeliness of crucial detail to us about what is happening. There's so much confusion at that time. Nobody knows what's going on. We are calling everybody, and it's so 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 unsettling. In fact, people with uh, health issues could actually have it, uh, you know, degrading to 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 a terrible state. So I think timeliness of information is very key, and I think that is being addressed, you know, with this new uh, in, initiative. Uh, I, I don't want to say, I don't want to talk much about the insurance and all that, but uh, I mean, those things may be, uh, they, are, they are obviously necessary, but initially what we are concerned about is where and what is going on. Who is going to attend, give us information? And that is what, that where, what portal is it? Where are we going to go to, to get uh, the, the timely, that, that important information that we need? Uh, and, and so that is the main, the main thing. And then there's so much negativity that comes in during that time. A lot of media, um, social media if, you know, things going around, and really that makes it very uncertain. So if we know exactly where to run to, who to attend to us, maybe it's an online portal, something to give us crucial feel at that moment, it is, it is very, very welcome and very, very 
timely. Thank you. Madam. There must be a strong unity, cooperation, and support between the two agencies of government that represent the state. The state here means the country. AIB and NCA, we both represent the state. That's why we are not classified as a service provider. We're not. We represent the state. The Civil Aviation Authority is a uh, regulator. AIB is the investigator. We work excellently together. And that is what has been responsible for the safety record we have today. NCA doing what they're supposed to do. AIB doing what they are mandated to do. If you listen to the DGNCA comment, it said some of the safety recommendations are targeted at NCA, the regulator. And for them, they've been responsive. Sometimes we, we do have some disagreement. They say, I don't agree with this, or is there any way we can? And then we, 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 we discuss it, and we agree at a point that is beneficiary to the flying public, because we're not a service provider. It's not a profit-oriented organization. We work, we serve the flying public, and that is one major thing that has been responsible for the excellent safety record Nigeria has today. Challenges on around crash site. Uh, it's, when you look at Nigeria generally, in the past, any crash site, it's like a market. Looting point for looters. People steal from crash sites. While others are trying to recover bodies, some people are after victims' bags, looking for money. We've seen it. And in one of the crashes, one of the recorders got missing till tomorrow. We never found it. And this was why when I came on board, we wrote to the Nigerian police to have an MOU with them, and we've trained a lot of policemen on their role on a crash site because that is their role to ensure a well-coordinated crash site. If you don't have business getting to that crash site, you don't get there. That is the role of the police. So we've made them to understand that, but one thing we're trying to achieve is to instill this program police role in a crash site into the police basic curriculum so that a, an ordinary constable leaving police college understand police role in a crash site. We have not succeeded yet. We're still waiting for police to come back with us. They have a draft MOU which includes all this uh, because AIB cannot do it alone. We can't keep training police, we can't train them, we don't even have the resources. So we can train the trainer, and then the police train their personnel ab initio by incorporating that program into their uh, courses. So, but so far, we've tried, we've, we've, we've moved forward in that. If you look at the last, last fatal crash we had, that was well managed, I don't know if you covered it, uh, the helicopter crash that uh, uh, the Lagos, it was well coordinated. Uh, nobody tampered with our evidence, which is very, very important to AIB because that's all we need to work with. Uh, thank you very much. And on the app, uh, Madam, even if you look at that banner there, it says AIB Nigeria app. We try our best to put it out there. It's on our website is on social media platform, is free to download. You don't need any password. If you go, just type iOS, uh, if you use a sanitize the public to put it out there, but you have to understand we're not service, we're not selling anything. We, we don't invoice anybody in line with 
uh, uh, UN Convention. We don't invoice for our services, so we're a bit constrained in terms of, um, so there is so much we can do, but we've tried our best to put it out there. It's on our website. All our events, we always have it displayed. So it's free. Just go uh, uh, to the um, uh, iOS or the Play Store and download it. Thank you. We'll never ever take this for granted. We'll never ever we'll take it for granted. It's a continuous journey. It's every day. Just because we've been safe in the last five years, we're not going to rest on our hours. We'll keep improvising. We'll keep developing methods. We'll keep cooperating with all the relevant stakeholders to ensure we'll not only maintain but significantly improve on this uh, safety. Uh, safety is not related only to accidents. We have incidents. And uh, we do still have incidents in Nigeria. And we we'll want to minimize the incidents to the barest possible levels. If we can eliminate it completely, we will eliminate it. So uh, safety is not something we should take for granted. It's a, it's, a, it's a lifelong journey. It's a lifelong journey. It's continuous every day, 24 hours a day, uh, and nonstop. We in the NCA uh, improve safety oversight, help that, but the reports and the recommendations of AIB is a significant part component of that improve uh, uh, safety oversight. They do give us recommendations and implementation of those recommendations help us see gaps we might not see and they, they investigate and see things we might not necessarily see and they make recommendation and we work with them continuously. So it's, I just want to stress, it's an ongoing journey, it's a lifelong journey, safety is a lifelong journey. And uh, we'll continue doing our best with all the stakeholders, not only in CA with the IB, but also with all the uh, entire, all stakeholders in the industry and uh, all Nigerians, even the press can help. We do get reports from uh, press on some uh, incidents they might have observed, which uh, neither AIB nor NCA will have seen, but we get that and we investigate and uh, we work on that. And once we get that, we'll uh, effect it uh, into the system. And the second question, if I'm not mistaken, is the issue of recognizing, not only sanctioning people who have broken the law, but recognizing those who have, uh, have been complying with the law. Yes, uh, if we can develop a system, maybe at the end of year, I want to recognize uh, the performance in different, not only safety, uh, passenger uh, 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 service and all that. Uh, it's, it's a good idea, but and do that in regards to safety, we have to be very careful. If we keep recognizing safety, I am a bit skeptic. The airline might still, or the parties might think, oh, we're doing okay, <laughs> and the rest of that was. We, we, we have to be very careful as regards to safety. And I said safety, it's not an end to your trip. It's a lifelong journey, and we must keep resting on our oars completely every day. Every flight is different. As a pilot, I can tell you that every flight, every day you go out on the field, it's a different ballgame. You can depart from Lagos to Abuja, Abuja to Rio, it's different. So safety is continuous. There's, and there are several factors that affect safety. So we have to be a bit careful on that. We recognize you with, uh, with, with a caution, with a caution not to love people into a sense of we're being safe, so we, we relax. Uh, I think the third question is to do with the uh, accident, previous accidents in which the, uh, there's not been compensation. You mentioned two accidents, one in 2005 and one in 2010. Since now, the uh, accident, uh, air crash victims and uh, and their families is being formalized, uh, we'll, we'll take it up with them. And it's, it's very difficult, an entity that is no longer in existence. I, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very difficult thing to go back to deal with that entity that are no uh, longer in existence. But we'll, we'll uh, work with AIB on this uh, 
uh, system that is being formalized to see if there are uh, things that can be done to compensate. They deserve that compensation. I don't know what happened in 2005, but we'll look at it in 2010. If there are things we can do, we certainly uh, will do that. And I think the last one was a bit on the delay, or flight delay. Of course, we've been having significant issues on flight delays. There are several reasons for flight delays. And uh, without making an excuse for any airline or anybody, it's an ecosystem issue. There are many factors that affect flight delays from almost all parts of the ecosystem. Uh, the Honorable Minister has expressed his uh, con significant concern. Even the National Assembly have done that. We have set up a committee that's working on this to see what are the root causes. The root causes, we need to get down and do a root, proper root cause analysis. And what we've been doing in Nigeria many times, we deal with the symptom, but if you don't go to the, do a proper root cause analysis and deal with that issue, it's going to occur. It's just a matter of time. And I think we'd rather take our time and do a proper analysis with all stakeholders, industry, and come up with proper solutions to deal with these issues as to eliminate for this. I, I can give you an example. It's just having like a uh, water sewage in front of your house and your kids keep getting malaria all the time and you keep giving them the queen. You're not solving the problem. Unless you get the root to that, get rid of that rubbish, get rid of that of stagnant water so that the mosquitoes won't breed, you'll keep getting, your kids will keep getting malaria. And you keep giving them the queen, that has significant consequences on the organs. You create more problems on the long run. So what we need to do is do a proper, have a committee that will do a proper root cause analysis so that we can have the appropriate solutions and get rid of those uh, uh, issues that create this uh, flight delays. It affects everybody across the system. So it's the airlines, it's NCA, it's NAMA, it's FAN, it's ground handlers, it's everybody. So we really need to get the, uh, to the bottom of that. But it's a question that has came up and it requires actually um, attention to be given to that question. In view of the bill passed lately by National Assembly for encompassing other modes of transportation, for investigating its accidents, uh, asked by one of the members here. Um, seems like it will burden the Aircraft Accident Investigation Bureau. Aircraft Accident Investigation Bureau, by act, was established to investigate accidents and incidents of aircraft. Then now, the National Assembly, in its wisdom, so that they also have to make it mandate of the Bureau to include all other intermodal accidents, like railway, of course, water transport, and also road transportation. Only God knows when we were seated just between this 1 p.m. to this time, especially for roads, uh, how many accidents actually that has happened even within the vicinity of Abuja. Um, if they do it that way, we know that the, um, uh, the, um, the mandate of the accident, I mean the aircraft accident, which will be different from railway accident, different from road accident, or even marine accident. So it's a kind of policy issue. Of course, if the Bureau is saddled with these responsibilities again, then again, we'll also try to see that we get more trainings on the other sectors. But it's not new also that it's only probably is peculiar to Nigeria that AIB is for aircraft accident investigation. There are some examples which will be given, like in the U.S., the National Transportation Safety Board is an intermodal uh, accident investigation for other 
transport uh, sectors comprises of all other uh, mode of transportation. Uh, Sweden, UK, Finland, Korea, Japan. All these actually have the same mode which now they introduced to uh, AIV. So in view of that, AIV may not seem to be a burden with that, rather it can actually get some more resources in personnel and others to train them in various sectors. But that of the aircraft is also, which we are already in it, should also continue. But it seems like they are just widening, I mean broadening the mandate of the Bureau to take care of those. Of course, we know that if you are driving a car, it's different from you actually flying an aircraft. So when accidents occur, you know how to investigate it. Have to come in with that. Thank you very much. The same. Whether it's uh, road, rail, mar uh, marine, air, accident investigation is accident investigation. Um, the only thing we need to do is to get experts in maritime, experts in rail, so that we understand the systems, how it works, and then train them on accident investigation. So this uh, journey started about three years ago. Uh, you gladly, uh, you'll be pleased to know that we already trained some of our investigators in rail and maritime accident investigation. They were trained in Cranfield. About 10 of them have been trained already. And come July, June this year, we will be going uh, to TSIB in Canada to understudy, to have an insight into their success story. Because Canada is one of the countries that has a multimodal system. The whole idea is the, what the world, IMO, ICAO, everybody is pushing for is separate investigators from the regulators, from the service providers. This is all what they're saying. So that there can be, a, 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 um, what do you call it, the independent investigation. There will be objective investigation. You take Nigerian Railway Corporation, for instance, today, they are the regulator, they are the investigator, they are the service provider. Where's the objectivity in that? So uh, uh, there will be conflict of interest, definitely, because the people that investigate rail accidents are actually attached to the managing director's office. They report directly to him. So where's the objectivity? So that's what the world is saying. You need to separate them. Let there be a body that can investigate or that will investigate, let there be a body that will regulate and let there be a body or companies that will be the service providers. And that's what Nigeria is just, we're not reinventing the wheel, we're just aligning ourselves with the rest of the world. And the list is unending of countries that has uh, multimodal accident investigation agencies as we speak. I thank you very much.